Hello everyone. Well, one of the mysteries of the financial markets nowadays is the disconnect between U.S. interest rates and the direction of the dollar. Interest rates have been falling and falling. Fed funds expectations have fallen dramatically as well. And yet, the dollar has been rising. Part of it is due to the weakness of the euro. And part, I'm sure, is because the U.S. economic indicators are exceeding expectations. But if U.S. indicators are exceeding expectations, then why are rates falling? Curiouser and curiouser. In fact, it's too complicated to go into detail in this brief video, so please take a look at the comment on our website. In any event, the dollar continued its gains overnight, rising against all the G10 currencies except for the yen and the Australian dollar. Euro dollar broke below the 136.12 level that's provided support until now, which suggests to me that the dollar is likely to continue to gain. It even gained against the pound despite comments by Martin Wheel, an external member of the Bank of England's Monetary Policy Committee, in a Financial Times interview that uh, Mr. Wheel said rates would have to start rising earlier than expected and could rise by up to one percentage point a year, faster than the market currently anticipates. Now, the failure of Sterling to respond to this comment suggests to me that uh, sentiment to the towards the pound has changed significantly. The technical picture for the pound has also turned poor. So I'm becoming more and more cautious on the currency. Overnight, Japan announced that retail sales for April fell at a record 13.7% month on month, exceeding market estimates, guesses really, of an 11.7% month on month decline. The fact is, nobody really had any idea how much demand would fall, uh, fall off after the consumer splurge in March. Consumers, as you remember, were uh, splurging ahead of the hike in the consumption tax on April 1st. Now we'll be waiting to see how long it takes for demand to bounce back to normal. One might have thought that the larger than expected decline would depress the yen as it makes further Bank of Japan easing marginally more likely. But the currency was strengthening before the news and really didn't react to the report at all. Australia's private capital expenditure collapsed 4.2% uh, quarter on quarter in the first quarter, far more than the market had expected, but that was the first quarter, and the market focused instead on the forward-looking news, the spending plans for fiscal year 2014-15. These showed a rise of $12.2 billion from the previous, es previous estimate, which was well above expectations. The key point was that this rise was due to increased investment intentions of the services sector suggesting that other industries may be able to take over from the mining industry as the engine of growth for the Australian economy. As for today's indicators, there's nothing out of Europe. On the other hand, there are several important U.S. indicators coming out. U.S. first quarter GDP is expected to be revised down to a decline, but the first quarter ended almost two months ago, and the second quarter data has been shaping up fairly well. Initial jobless claims are expected to have declined to 318,000 from 326,000, bringing the four-week moving average down to 316,000 from 323. Finally, pending home sales for April are expected to slow. For more information, including technical analysis, please read the full comment on ironethics.com. You can also follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or circle us on Google Plus to get more trading ideas. This is Marshall Gittler, Global Head of FX Strategy at INFX Global, wishing you solid trading.